Do you enjoy brutal, violent entertainment? Of course you do. And people from all over the world who lived hundreds of years ago felt the same way. Here are 10 of the most violent sports that have ever been played. Number one, Pancration. Pancration was basically the ancient Greek version of mixed martial arts, and it was every bit as brutal, if not more so. There were only two rules, no biting and no eye gouging. Outside of that, pretty much everything else was permitted. You were allowed to punch, kick, throw your opponent, choke them, grapple them, and once they hit the floor, of course, you're allowed to continue pounding on them. One fighter even earned the nickname Mr. Digits because during fights, he had this habit of breaking his opponent's fingers. Number two, water jousting. The ancient Egyptian sport of water jousting involved two teams, each in a boat, sailing along the Nile River. The teams would try to push members of the opposing team into the water. People pushed into the water would often either drown or be eaten by crocodiles. The game was practiced as a deadly way of settling disputes. Number three, Nomachia. Bloody gladiator battles were not the only violent entertainment to take place in ancient Rome. The Romans also held an event known as Nomachia, and it was an event that was even bloodier than the gladiator games. Basically, Nomachia worked like this. An arena was purposely flooded, and fleets of ships were deployed on the water, usually manned by prisoners. The ships would then engage in naval combat for the entertainment of the crowd. These were large-scale naval battles, usually involving thousands of men fighting all at once. One could just imagine the violent intensity that was to be on display inside of these flooded arenas. Number four, skin pulling. The Vikings played a variation of tug-of-war known as skin pooling. Rather than playing tug-of-war with a rope, they used an animal skin. And between the two teams, there wasn't a little mud puddle or any of that. Instead, there was a large pit of open fire. They used skin pooling as a contest to determine who would get the spoils of a plundered village. Number 5. Shin Kicking Originating in 17th century England, the game of shin kicking involved two fighters wearing white smocks, holding onto each other's shoulder while kicking each other with the toe of their shoes right in the shin. As you've guessed, the sport requires an incredible tolerance to pain. Number six, volcano sledding. Snowboarding down the side of a mountain sounds like fun, but how about sliding down the side of a volcano? Hei holua is a Hawaiian sport that is over 2,000 years old. It involved using a sled to travel down the surface of a volcano. Practitioners would ride down the surface of the volcano at intense speeds, often reaching 60 miles per hour or 96 kilometers per hour. Making a mistake and falling could result in serious injury or even death. Number 7. Buskashi the Afghan sport of Buskashi is said to have originated 800 years ago during the Mongol invasion of Afghanistan. The sport is thought to have originated from techniques that were used in order to recapture livestock that were stolen from the Mongols. But today, Buskashi is simply Afghanistan's national sport. Basically how it goes is in Buskashi, horsemen carrying whips fight to capture a decapitated goat or calf carcass. Successful Buskashi athletes have used their skills to escape poverty. They are often given expensive tips and are paid high salaries by wealthy Afghans who enjoy the sport of Buskashi. Number 8. Chariot Racing Chariot racing was a very popular sport in ancient Greece and Rome. Roman chariot races lasted for 7 laps with up to 12 chariots per race. Chariots were built for speed but not safety, so they were very light. They could easily be tipped over, and the charioteer could be hurled from the chariot and even crushed by oncoming horses. Number nine, Calcio Storico. This sport is a combination of bare knuckle brawling, rugby, and mixed martial arts. Calcio Storico is a sport that originated in 16th century Florence, Italy, and it is possibly the most brutal sport that is still played today. The objective of the game is to get the ball into the narrow slit 
on the opposing team's goal. And players are allowed to do this by almost any means necessary. There are 27 players on each side, and players are allowed to punch, headbutt, choke, kick, grapple, and elbow members of the opposing team. Injuries are guaranteed to occur, but the game is still played for an entire 50 minutes uninterrupted. Injured players are simply carried away on a stretcher, but they are not replaced. After enduring all the brutality, the players are not awarded with money or trophies. Instead, all they receive is a free dinner from the sports organization. Number 10. Ancient Greek Boxing Boxing was practiced in ancient Greece, but the rules were far different from the rules of boxing today. For one, there were no weight classes. Competitors were paired at random, not by weight. There were also no rounds. Fights went on until a fighter either gave up or was knocked out cold. A boxer was even allowed to continue striking their opponent, even if they were knocked to the ground. There was one legendary boxing match between two men named Demoxenos and Cruegas. The two boxers had been fighting each other for quite a long time at this point. In order to end the match, they agreed to take turns landing a single, undefended strike. Cruegas landed his punch to the face of Demoxenos. Demoxenos then pointed out his two fingers and struck Cruegas under the ribs. His fingernails cut through Cruegas' skin and he pulled out Cruegas' intestines. Kuregas died on the spot. However, the judges disqualified Demoxenos because, apparently, ripping out the internal organs of your opponent was considered to be multiple strikes, rather than the agreed-upon one strike. The dead Kuregas was awarded the victory, and a statue was built in his honor. Well, it's a great thing that boxers wear gloves today, so that that will never happen again. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time. Have a wonderful day.